Uh, we examined this when I put my original motion to ask for these additional environmental review. Uh, we examined this when the appeal was filed. We took those issues together. We recommended the Planning, Land Use, and Management Committee to the Council to support additional environmental review, and that's what we voted on this past week. And uh, I want to make one thing clear, however. If we were to determine that every B permit would need to go through this process, I think that would slow down development in Los Angeles dramatically. We're not saying that. There is case law that determines when a B permit should be take this process that we took. And uh, that's when additional discretionary review uh, is being made. And so this was a very unique case. It's not typical. And uh, we're doing the right thing by saying, let's not just close our eyes, allow this to move forward when, in fact, we haven't done our proper environmental review. So now, apparently, there will be a supplemental environmental, environmental impact report. Who pays for that? Who conducts it? And how long would it take? Well, in fact, the city has ordered that the developer do the additional environmental review. Uh, however, the developer has decided to sue the city. Uh, they believe that there was no legal grounds to do this. Uh, we believe uh, that we are in the right to do this. Uh, if, in fact, the additional environmental review were to be conducted, the developer would conduct that review. Uh, it takes anywhere from six, to a six months to a year to complete. The developer typ typically pays for, for that uh, additional environmental review. Review, but I've always contended that if in fact there was nothing to hide, if in fact the developer believes that it's safe to build on that property, they would have nothing to hide and they would do the additional environmental review. They'd rather, they'd rather fight the city. This has been going on, uh, this battle has been going on for close to a year now for, from them not wanting to do the additional environmental review. I say if they had nothing to hide, they would have done the environment, uh, environmental review gotten it over with and proceeded with their project. I just want to make sure this community is safe, that the environment is safe, and that we're doing everything possible to protect the citizens of the city of Los Angeles. To be clear, this does not mean the project will be abandoned, though. No. When we vote to do additional environmental review, all that is asking is we have some environmental information. We're going to go back out there walk the land, do some tests, determine if in fact there are additional environmental impacts. If there is, we want to make some mitigation recommendations and implement those recommendations and the project will proceed. It doesn't stop the project. That's why I, I keep telling the developer, just do the additional environmental review. What are you afraid of? And I'm sure this is the first time I've ever heard the term fluvial geomorphologist mentioned in the LA City Council meeting. <laughs> You know, I, uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not a technical expert. I'm uh, an elected official with a public policy background. Uh, but I take what the experts say and do my best and use my best judgment to do what's best in the, in the city's interest, in our residents' interest. And in fact, from what I'm seeing, I keep saying, you know, if we're moving 300,000 square feet of, uh, of soil, that must have some impact on the environment and the local residents. We have to examine that to see if it's safe for, for us to do that. District 14 Council Member Jose Wezar, thanks for joining us on Council Week in Review. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here with all of you. And again, Mr. Wezar was supported unanimously by his council colleagues with a vote of 13 eyes. Watch Council Week in Review for highlights of the week's council meetings and listen for the item numbers associated with those discussions you have an interest in. Then go to the World Wide Web and listen to them in their entirety using the new Video On Demand feature. Just go to the city's website at lacity.org and follow the instructions on the screen. Now, if you have suggestions or comments about any of the programs you see here on Channel 35 or would like to receive a free viewer guide, call our viewer hotline at 213-473-3978. And remember, you can watch all Los Angeles City Council meetings live in their entirety on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays beginning at 10 a.m. On Sundays, you can watch the replay of all the week's meetings also beginning at 10 a.m. Well, that concludes our program for the week ending October 26, 2007. On behalf of Taffy Eason and everyone here at Channel 35, I'm Jack Pope Joy. Thank you for watching, and please join us for the next Council Week in Review. I'm Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, and September is Latino Heritage Month. This month, we continue to honor our rich and diverse past and highlight the work of local artists who keep Latino traditions alive and vibrant in our communities. 
Los Angeles truly is where the world comes together. And I encourage you to explore the many facets of Latino culture by taking part in this month's festivities and visiting your neighborhood arts and cultural centers. For a listing of all the events, exhibits, fairs, and festivals, visit our website, latino.lacity.org. Bring your family to Hollywood Santa Parade, Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. Santa will be there to help kick off the holiday season in style. Come early to enjoy all that Hollywood has to offer. Go Metro to Hollywood and Highland. Call 1-866-PARADE-1 for more information.
Good morning, Los Angeles, and welcome to the City Council meeting for Tuesday, October 30th, 2007. We are in the John Ferraro Council Chamber, room 340 of City Hall, where we meet every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., except for the first Friday of the month in which we meet down at Van Nuys uh, City Hall. I want to welcome the City Council members who are here pursuant to Council rules on time, uh, Council Members Cardenas, Gruel, Labange, Rosendahl, Smith, and Wesson. Mr. Weiss and Mr. Zine are excused today, uh, but we do expect Mr. Alarcon, uh, Ms. Hahn, Mr. Wiesar, Mr. Parks, Ms. Perry, who I know is upstairs chairing our Energy and Environment Committee, and Mr. Reyes to join us as soon as possible. Council President Eric Garcetti, and uh, we have before us uh, our agendas, which are available here in Council Chambers for members of the public, also available uh, online at lacity.org. Those agendas are posted 72 hours in advance on our city's website and 24 hours um, for special meetings. Those are also available in person through our city clerk's office if folks would like to come in. We're broadcast live on Channel 35 for each council meeting, and we want to welcome our viewers on LA City View, your city channel. And we also are uh, uh, rebroadcast in the evening as well on Channel 35. If you don't have cable television, you can always watch us through your computer at lacity.org where they have uh, a live streaming webcast video, as well as uh, the ability to get archived video of our past council meetings. And finally, one last way to uh, listen to the council meetings is through Council Phone, a service of our ITA department, uh, a number you can call and listen to the proceedings at 213-621-CITY. That's 213-621-CITY. We are waiting one more council member. We now have council members Alarcon, Cardenas, Gruel, Hahn, Labange, Rosendahl, uh, Smith, and Wesson, and we are waiting either Mr. Wiesar, uh, Mr. Parks, Ms. Perry, um, or Mr. Reyes, if they will please make their way down to council chambers as quickly as possible. If uh, members of the public would like to speak on any items, they can fill out a speaker card in the back of the chambers or in Van Nuys City Hall where we have teleconferencing uh, remote uh, capability. Just fill out the speaker card and give it to one of the sergeants at arms, and uh, they'll be happy to pass it on to us. If uh, an item has already received a public hearing in committee, then uh, they uh, are not necessarily held here unless a council member moves for it. If it has not received a, a hearing in committee, it will receive one here in the full council. And finally, for items that are on the agenda, uh, sorry, not on the agenda, but are under our jurisdiction, you can fill out a general speaker card and again give that to the Sergeant at Arms. We now have ten members, so with that, Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alarcon, Cardenas, Gruel, Hahn, Weasel, Labonge, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, Smith, Weiss, Wesson, Zine, Garcetti, ten members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. First order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. All right. Mr. Smith moves and uh, Mr. Rosendahl seconds. Without objection, those minutes will be approved. Next order of business, please. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Um, Wendy Gruel will uh, move that and uh, Mr. Parks uh, second. Without objection, those two will be approved. Next order of business. Mr. President, this is Tuesday and there's a flag salute for today. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wieser, would you be kind enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? If I can ask everybody in council chambers to please rise for salute to the flag. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, and uh, if we can run through the agenda, please. On the regular agenda, items 1 through 5 are building and safety assessments, notice for public hearing. Uh, the Department of Building and Safety reports that item 4 may be received and filed in as much as lien has been paid. Okay. We'll receive and file number 4. I do not have any cards on 1 through 5, so we'll go ahead and open and close the public hearings. Any council members wishing to call 1 through 5 special? Seeing none, we'll take up those together. Please open the roll, Madam Clerk. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Next items, please. Items 6 through 17 are items which public hearings have been held. Okay. Uh, public hearings have been held in committee on these items, 6 through 17. Um, anybody wishing to call any of the items special? This is numbers 6 through 17. 6 through 17. Um, we'll call number 8 special for Mr. Alarcon, I believe. Um, nope. Okay. Actually, we do not need to call that special. Um, any other spe or any specials, colleagues? 
If not, let's go ahead and take the 6 through 17, all of them, please. Open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Next items, please. Items 18 through 34, items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Item 18 is a commission reappointment. Do you wish to hold that on the desk? Yes, please. Let's hold the commissioner appointment on the desk. And we have cards on a few of these items as well. 27, uh, 31, and uh, 32. So we will call those special for cards from the public. Uh, Ms. Gruel? Yes, on item number uh, 30, uh, we would like to continue that for 30 days and request a, a report back from engineering uh, to public works um, to understand the impact that this will have on the easement and the trail that it appears to cut through. Okay. That will be the motion on item 30 without objection. Uh, we'll open and close the public hearings for the other items. Um, any other specials, colleagues? Special items 18 through 34. Going once, going twice, no more specials. Let's take up the balance. Let's save the ordinances to see if we get 12 members. So that would be 24 through 34, except those called special for cards. Please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Next items, please. On the supplemental agenda, items 35 and 36 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, I'd like to call 35 special. We also have a card from the public on that one. And 36, we have a card from the public as well. So we will call that special as well. All right. I'm going to return back to uh, public comment be in order now, Mr. Clerk? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll take up our general public comment. But right before that, I want to recognize Mr. Labanche uh, for a quick introduction. Members, good morning. We have our guest, a very special guest from our sister city of Berlin, Germany. You know, this is the 40th anniversary, and earlier this year, Klaus Wolbright, the mayor, came and addressed us. But his chief of staff and the secretary of state for the city uh, and the state of Berlin is with us, Barbara Kessler. Please give her a big warm welcome, along with Council General Christian Stocks. Honorable members of the city of council, I have to bring you the greetings of Klaus Wobereit, and I have to tell you that it's a great honor and a pleasure for me to be here. It's my first visit in L.A., but uh, I promise you it won't be the last one. It won't be the last one. It won't be. Right. It won't be the last one. I admire the energy of uh, this city. I admire the love I feel uh, between the people who are living here. And um, there are only some problems I think you have to solve. And uh, we try in Berlin to make it a little bit easier, perhaps, if deepened our relationships. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you uh, members, Mr. President, thank you. Thank you very much. We will now go to general public comment. Our first uh, speaker will be Sky Anderson. After Mr. Anderson will be Donna Pearman out in Van Nuys, and then we'll come back here for Michael Carrion. Good morning, Mr. Anderson. My name is Sky Anderson. I'm a community activist. <clears throat> first, I want to apologize to Mr. Garcetti. I didn't check with his staff to see what he had done to help the homeless. I'm like a person that gets in a football game and doesn't know how to play, but I learn how to play by getting in the game. So I want to apologize to Mr. Garcetti. I want to thank Bill Rosendahl. I read in a City Beat magazine how he had helped the people in Lincoln Place. Now he got the city council to change a, a motion, to change a ruling, and uh, he obviously deeply cares about people. He went out there. He didn't have to do anything, and he used his influence and his personality to really help these people, these people who are older and going to be homeless. Uh, I grew up in San, I mean, I spent 20 years in San Diego, and San Diego is built, county is built on the property, the value of property, the love of property, and uh, they had all these fires that destroyed property, destroyed homes, so the very thing they valued the most was destroyed, and that's kind of an example of what happens in God's will sometimes. I think we value that are not good for people can be destroyed by an act of nature. So if you think you're fine and you're secure and whatever you have, believe me, it could be wiped out tomorrow. And I read an article in the city about there's no point in talking to the city council public comments because no one listened, no city council person listened. This is on the Internet. Two, uh, you don't think uh, 
people have power. Uh, Mike Andovich was accused of sabotaging the home, the rescue mission, uh, home, home for the homeless. I came up here and accused him of killing our children, and then when that committee met, they almost vol they almost completely approved the moving. I want to take on Jan Perry because I read negative things about her on the internet, but one by her office this morning, and they told me that they're going to prepare a list of things she's done to help the homeless. So I'm going to confer judgment to Jan Perry until I get something else. I'm not just an activist. I prepared this flyer that says that all the people that can help in the homeless, like three rescue missions, feed the homeless daily. Uh, Volunteers of America get free showers or free clothes at the Set Free Church. There's a lot of help in the Skid Row area for homeless people. Thank you very much, Mr. Anderson. Our next speaker is in Van Nuys. It's Donna Pearman. Then we'll come back here for Michael Carrion. Good morning. Anyway, I believe, uh, I believe, as uh, Garcetti, said, he, uh, you listen. Anyway, sorry Miriam couldn't come. She has laryngitis, but she'll be back. I read the recall of a councilman Weiss was several thousand people short. Most of those signed are in West Los Angeles. If people who work in West Los Angeles got to sign, I hate to tell the councilman, they, he would be out. One way to please those myself who works there and your constituents is to fix the transit problem cars and buses and parking problems in west west, west la also it would help if council members didn't take illegal contributions but right now i'm concerned about the bus problems in west los angeles getting worse if i get to wilshire and westwood or the village after 6 a.m it's very difficult to get my, to my final destination wilshire and bundy along wilshire we now have several buses i believe taken away from the 720 santa monica we have the 720 20 Westwood stops at the federal building, not even a VA hospital needed for veterans, especially aged and disabled. We also have new 920 buses that go straight to the beach. It's not extra buses put on the street, but a converted 720 Santa Monica. When I get them, people are crowding on. The bus driver has to yell at us to move back, and people are yelling at each other, and 920 glides along with a minimum of people. Number 20, Santa Monica's on the other side of the street. It runs even more sporadic. You have to decide which bus beforehand, which bus you want beforehand. Once you commit, you can't make it to the other bus if it comes first. They should be both be on the same side of the street, Wilshire and Westwood. Put local 20 beginning on the beginning of the street and 720 in the middle of the street. We don't need a subway to the sea. Many are going, many are not going that far. It will be worse for people taking cars. Remember, council members, you take a car most of the time, especially when you have several places to go. City employees are not being fairly paid. Costs are higher than the cost of living increase. With more taxes added, it's almost no increase. We need our teachers, firefighters, police, sewer workers, anything affecting the, also I want to tell people, anything affecting the property owners affects the renters, so don't vote for new taxes. Thank you, Ms. Perman. Our next speaker is Michael Carrion. Would you like to, Mr. Carrion, would you like to go now or would you like to wait? I can call you in a speaker or two if you don't. Okay. After that will be Michael Hunt and after that, uh, Matthew Dowd. Yes, Good morning. My name is Michael Carrion. I don't know if every one of you has got this. This is a memo that was sent out to Mr. Rosenthal on February 14. Uh, can I get your attention, please? Yes, sir. This please is uh, one of the mayor's pet projects is a million tree. Uh, I went to each one of your offices and asked, how are we going to fund the maintenance on these trees? And every one of your offices says, I don't know. We don't have an answer for this. I don't know where the mayor got this idea. It's a great idea on paper, but we can't fix the trees we have. The letter, um, this memo states that our trees are not being trimmed, but every 10 to 15 years. I bet you the trees in your house aren't trimmed every 10 to 15 years. The branches are falling on people's cars, and the city states we had no prior knowledge. Yet, Mr. Robinson, the director, states in this memo that he's aware of the lack of tree trimming, the lack of maintenance. Our sidewalks are being torn up by the trees, the ficus trees that were planted years ago because there was no planning. Yet today, the mayor has a whim and no one in this city, in this horseshoe, stands up to him and tells him, Mr. I don't know if it's Villa or Rigosa now, states where is the money coming from to pay for the maintenance in the future? I don't know. You guys worry about in the future. I've got bigger and better plans. I'm going somewhere else. I won't be here. I only got a certain amount of years to be the mayor. Maybe I'll be running the Board of Education by then. But I'd just like for you guys, we vote for you, 
You come to our communities, you ask us to vote for you, stand up for what's right. Please stop planting these trees on public property if you do not have a way to pay for them and the maintenance in the future. Get the money to pay for the trees that we have today first. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carrion. We have uh, Mr. Hunt. Good morning. Can I have a sergeant of arms, somebody to disperse the, pa the paperwork? Okay. Here's what I like to talk about is the meetings and what you guys are getting ready to look at uh, is the paperwork from the boardwalk, how they're trying to segregate it and push all the uh, African Americans to one end or the other end of the boardwalk. Um, once you guys get this map of, of what's going on, you guys will then understand and we're trying to clarify that we want the sections uh, interspersed uh, and we really want to close the deal out. Uh, I think that you guys really ought to take a hand in this and pay attention to what the city attorney's office is trying to do. We brought you guys the truth. We will continue to bring you, the tr you guys the truth. It's illegal what they were doing. It's illegal what they're trying to do. And if you think that I'm going to let them segregate the boardwalk, you have a different, yeah, I mean, a, you're going to have a different fight in federal court, and you're going to end up getting sued again. Um, on that note, you know, we just really want to keep it real with you guys and keep it honest. Um, I think it's going to be a difficult time for the city to, to find somebody that really is going to take on Steve Rohde if we decide to go into trial. That makes a, a great, great difference. Our attorney, um, it's a little bit better than what the average people have, and we're ready to fight either way. But please, 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 uh, that boardwalk will not be segregated at, at any time or any point as long as I'm living. Uh, thank you, guys, and have a good day. Uh, Mr. Dowd is our last speaker for public comment. Yeah, thank you, City Council. I've got the uh, camera running today because because uh, I want to talk about the uh, the latest 4215, which says right in the findings and purpose that Venice Beach is a major tourist attraction in the city of Los Angeles, historically significant for its performance and visual artists as well as free speech advocates. And they're making the whole boardwalk a free speech zone now, a, a political speech, and you're only allowed to sell CDs or political buttons. So I'm gonna go into the political button business. I went down the boardwalk and just thought I'd get some ideas, you know, and I, I bought these, and the judge says this is what's legal. Stuff like fuck high prices, McShit, fuck that shit. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I would ask you respectfully to use other language while you're here. You know we've gone through this and you have the right certainly to use that. But I would ask you in strongest terms, uh, we have all sorts of people who come to these chambers and out of respect, if you would please change the tone of those words and if you become offensive or threatening or directly insulting we have the policy right there on the um, podium about what we expect please continue are you taking all my time you're going to reset the clock i thought i had two please minutes because we did have the aclu attorney and said it was the, the only the behavior so obviously you've got a rule here See, I mean, this is political speech, this is a political forum, and this one says you're cordially invited to go fuck yourself. Sir, I'm going to give you a second warning, please. Mr. Alicon? This is broadcast. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. City Attorney? If, if the, the council could find that he's disrupting the meeting, and also if it is a, a offensive Very, uh, speech, he can be told to stop. I'm riding on the edge. Sir, we let you say, say those things. We, we appreciate your 
comments, you have the ability to do that. Um, and now we'll have our final speaker, Merv Evans, as our last speaker here. And, and for the record, he has been warned. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, it's good to see you again, Merv Evans. I've sent a letter to the vice president and our mayor that we need to do more for our homeless veterans. We need public policies that protect our homeless veterans and aggressive outreach to serve our homeless veterans. And if you think we have a homeless problem now, project out to 24, 18 months. Let me share with you that I believe that the police commission should stop impounding automobiles because that is just simply the last resort. That we should stop issuing citations to our homeless citizens for sleeping in an auto. That we need an emergency Section 8 program for our veterans. And of course, we need to stop 1B visa applications for non-agricultural workers when a veteran is available for that job. Now, the city of Los Angeles has a responsibility not to follow, but to lead. And this council has exceptional talent on it. Therefore, I know we can do better by our veterans and that you care about our veterans, too, especially our homeless ones. Merv Evans, your friend, I'm counting on you. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans. Appreciate your comments today. That closes our general public comment. Um, we, if we can take up the ordinances and then we'll have one to reconsider now that we have 12 members. That's 19 through 23. Uh, if we can please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. Those are approved. And, um, okay, if we can then take up uh, the commissioner. That is item 18. Is that, that is the reappointment of Mr. Martin Cooper to the Quality and Productivity Commission. Okay. Mr. Cooper, if you'd like to come forward. Thank you for your patience this morning. And uh, that came through our uh, personnel committee, correct? Actually, that was waived out of the audits committee. That was waived out of audits, okay. Why don't you come forward to the table, Mr. Cooper. And um, I want to thank you for putting yourself forward for service. And uh, if, you, if there's anything you'd like to tell the council at this time, uh, please, the uh, uh, yes, podium is yours. Yes, Garcetti. <clears throat> uh, being passed out to you now is a two-year plan of action for the Quality and Productivity Commission. Uh, the mayor appointed me to this commission, and you all uh, voted for my appointment two years ago, and uh, this is for a reappointment. And I wrote this two-year strategic plan, which has four elements to it, and uh, our commission voted unanimously to utilize this as our blueprint for moving forward, and I'd be happy to uh, discuss it in any detail anyone would like or respond to any questions. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Marty. Appreciate all that you have done. Again, and as Mr. Garcetti mentioned, your willingness to, to, to serve and uh, particularly in this, this commission, which is very, very important for us to look at uh, ways in which we can be more efficient. Mr. Smith, followed by Mr. Alicon. Thank you. And I haven't had a chance to read your, your document, Marty, so let me just ask you. Uh, many years ago, the commission had a, a, pro a project that if a citizen, city employee came forward with an idea to save money, they got a reward for part of the savings, and we don't do that anymore. Um, do you th I don't know if it's in your document or not, but do you think that would be a valuable asset? I had introduced a motion to c reconsider that. Uh, uh, is it's it, not is it, Sorry. as a way to get people to participate who are really on the front line of city services. One of the four key elements in this is a communications program to reach out to the public and let them know what the city employees are doing, and I think that could easily be folded into that. So if, you, if I may, I'll come back to you and your staff, and yeah. we'll elaborate on that. We'll get a copy. I, I did introduce a motion of that effect uh, some six, eight months ago, and we'll find it for you, and maybe we can follow up on that and get that done. And thank, thank you. Thank and you. thank you for your service on BTAC and others. Mr. Alicon. Marty, we go back a lot of years, and I know that this has been a theme of yours long before you were a commissioner, and so I want to thank you for that commitment. But very briefly, can you describe, because I, I'm, I'm a back on the block, a new kid on the block, so if you could uh, describe what, what some of the uh, qualitative and productivity improvements that the commission has, uh, has made. Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, the main focus of the Commission's activities in the last several years has been to stimulate excellence and increase productivity on the part of city employees by recognizing it and rewarding it by uh, putting on a banquet each year at the Biltmore Hotel where after a rigorous screening process, uh, last year we had over 100 um, 
nominees that various city departments put in for their own work, and we uh, visited almost all of those sites around the city, from San Pedro to the Valley, uh, and all points north and south to uh, see what was being done. And we then had an awards program that recognized that. This year we want to continue to do that, and we want to expand upon that by some of the other items that are in this document that you're getting, Councilman Alicorn, uh, including, as I said to Councilman Smith, uh, improving the two-way communication between the city and its employees. And also, and, and we know very much that uh, budgetary issues are in front of you, so one of the things that we want to look at is the applicability of past honored programs for future use in other departments and other places as a means of saving money. Thank you. Um, I'd like to call Mr. Rosendahl as our next speaker. Good morning. Good morning. For those who don't understand this commission, would you give us an explanation of the mission of this commission? Sure. It sounds like the beginning of a song, yeah. the mission of the commission. Yes, indeed, it is. <laughs> Because uh, we like the song you sing for all of us, to be honest with you. Uh, the, the mission of the Quality and Productivity Commission is to uh, and expand and enhance the work of city employees so that it is more cost effective, so that the citizens of Los Angeles achieve more bang for their buck, and that they are recognized for so achieving that. Hmm, it's beautiful. Now, we just went through the budget process yesterday, sort of peak preview of our deficit we presently have, structural deficit that we have, and all the issues of all the departments. It was a five-hour session. It was great. The public could connect with it, and they could understand what's going on. How do you see yourself interacting with the budget? Um, on the first page of this document that you either have or will be handed, uh, the first issue that we talk about is the budget, an immediate shortfall of $75 million in its reserve fund, which provides liquidity to the city's fiscal system, has led the council to restrict all non-essential expenditures until further notice. So clearly we're aware of it. Yeah. One of the things that we want to focus in on is how can we take the programs that are utilized throughout this city by various departments, look at them and say, what's here that's applicable to other departments to save money? And there are a lot of them and the staff has been working with us to begin that process. Over the years, we have probably recognized over 100 cost savings, efficiency enhancing programs. And the goal is to look at every one of them, see what can be applied to what other programs, and to work with the general managers to bring those to them. I've spoken myself to a couple of general managers, asked them to attend one of our commission meetings and discuss with us areas where they save money and enhance productivity and what their thoughts are and how that can be applied citywide. Very good. I don't think most people know this, but our budget is $6.7 billion, uh, of which most of it's fixed. We have 40,000 employees that get a huge chunk of the basic budget, and it's just passed on. We basically here as a council uh, can deal with 300 million of it in policy decision making, but basically it's fixed, and it's 40,000 employees. Have you ever taken a deep breath and a look at, at the 20,000 that aren't police and fire, and maybe sunsetting some of these jobs, restructuring some of these jobs? Because I know how bureaucracy works. You create a slot, it never goes away even 20 years later. Uh, do you take a look at that? It's almost like a zero-based budgeting, but it's basically looking at the functions and looking at the personnel in the functions and saying, it's time we eliminated this. We're not doing this anymore. Um, are they looking at those kinds of people efficiencies, job classification efficiencies? Uh, Councilman, I'm not sure whether that is within the purview of this commission, but I will find out, and obviously we would work closely with the AGE to see if that can be looked at, and we will. Because it's very important from my end, and also when we talk about the structural deficit, in part, it's retirement benefits and health care issues. I wish there's a way in which you could look at the health care issues, because frankly, if I had my way, since we see no leadership in this country, that maybe the city of Los Angeles could create a health care policy for the four million people in the city that we could then administer it and turn around and save some money. Because if the feds can't do it, state can't do it, somebody's got to get a handle on health care. Is that an area that you could look at for us? Yes, it is. Great. Well, thank you. And thanks for stepping thank to the plate. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rosendahl. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cooper. With that, Madam Clerk, please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the votes.
12 eyes. You've been approved. Congratulations. Next item. Item 27, called special for a card from the public. We could go out to the valley to Donna Pearman. Ms. Pearman? Ms. Pearman? Yes, yeah, honey. <laughs> okay, I like to speak. Sorry. That's I like right. to speak That's again. Right. Okay, thank you. I like to speak against these again. These are a whole bunch of new fee waivers. Uh, I see one over here is environmental media awards, four thousand one hundred forty-four. San Cecilia Festival, four thousand four hundred sixteen. I'm sorry, I'm speaking right now. Okay, I, I can't. I can't do it. Okay, let me go quick. Yeah, okay. Ms. Pearman. Okay, I, I got it. I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, uh, Veterans Day street scene is awfully high at 21,130. A youth concert at 300, 778. Several that will be paid back. Why don't they pay beforehand? Like Pepsi, an event on October 28th. Uh, Hope. Uh, homecoming cor um, concert, uh, October 27th. Halloween. Uh, event on November the 1st, Dan and Real Life premiere October 24th. We see, uh, don't see why they don't pay for these events beforehand instead of having it, have the city pay. And, and then these people will come back events essentially later on and ask for these fees to be waived because it has done in the past. So uh, people have to remember that we city can't afford it. We can't even take care of our streets. Uh, we have to, we can't pave our streets right. We can't uh, maintain our trees right. And yet uh, back and forth we have all these fee waivers. Please, for once, don't look at these things and don't just vote for everything uh, automatically, verbatim. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pearman. Uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll on that item. Close the roll. Tabulate the votes. Twelve eyes. Thank you. And if we could uh, call item 35 uh, special now. Ms. Pearman was also uh, wanted to speak on that item. Ms. Pearman, out in the valley. Okay, that is about. Oh yeah, that is about that Halloween uh, parade. That is awful f high. $91,000 for a Hollywood parade. Certainly we can't afford something like this. I'm sorry that my friend Miriam couldn't be here so that she would speak so much more eloquently. This is way too high. I don't see where they're, uh, why it needs to cost so much money for this. I don't see why the companies are not coming, uh, paying for these things and getting tax write-offs. That's the proper way to do things, the way that we used to do them. And um, I guess that's it. That we shouldn't be paying for this. That's a separation of church and state. And I know you'll probably pass this. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Uh, 14 eyes or how many people we have there. And I just want to say this is wrong. This is way too much money. We can't afford it. We can't even pay our city employees. And yet we come up with things like this. Don't pass it. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, Madam President. And I uh, also call this special um, just to let folks know, uh, when the Chamber of Commerce that ran the parade for many years, 75 years of the Hollywood Christmas Parade, decided to uh, stop doing that um, because it was tough for them. They did not make money off of it, by the way. There was, it was a not-for-profit uh, venture. Um, we said we can't let this great tradition die in Los Angeles. It is probably the biggest parade in L.A. city that brings out regular folks, families that can come for free at the beginning of the holiday season. Um, and while the chamber retains the, the name of Hollywood Christmas Parade, uh, they have uh, wished us the best of luck and given us good advice, and the city has taken over uh, the Hollywood Santa Parade since we had to have a different name. Um, but we're very much looking forward to having folks come out. We wanted to let people know about this. We've got great uh, celebrities. Mary J. Blige is going to be there, uh, the cast of High School Musical. Um, I know a lot of council members, the mayor, our honorary mayor, of course, of, of Hollywood, Johnny Grant, will be there as always. Um, so come out on November 25th. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. It's going to be televised again on KTLA um, and produced by our own Channel 35, which 
uh, we really thank them for stepping up. Uh, I ask it for an I vote to create uh, to continue this great tradition here in Los Angeles. And I want to thank Mr. Labonge, who um, in the adjoining district has been just a true partner and champion. Um, it's been a dynamic duo and a team to make sure that this great tradition will not uh, go away. And Mr. Labonge, I know, is helping plan some stuff to honor uh, some of the firefighters who are out there in San Diego and uh, our L.A. County, L.A. City fire folks as well. So from around the country, those bands will come, the celebrities will be there, and we look forward to seeing many Angelinos celebrate one of our proudest traditions on November 26th for the Santa Parade. Uh, as the lights uh, go down in the city, the lights will come up on Hollywood, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks. Mr. LaBanche. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Mr. Garcetti, thank you for your leadership here as a district who uh, represents Hollywood's business center and the core of Hollywood. People come to see the Walk of Fame. You step right up and help create this, and I'm joined in partnership with you. Uh, it's so f uh, phenomenal to see the citizens of Los Angeles who don't necessarily go to a council meeting, a neighborhood meeting, but they come to the parade because it's their tradition. And I just think it's so important. Last year, I remember, and I think I spoke to you about, we got some banners made late at the Kinko's in the Miracle Mile. And the young woman who assisted me had just come from the east, and I told her how to take the bus there. And sure enough, when I got to the corner of Hollywood and Vine, having the honor to ride in the parade, she yelled at me, hey, hey, hey. And she was there with her son, Miss Hahn. And that's why we have parades. And I only asked Mr. City Attorney, find out if we could use the name uh, the uh, Hollywood Christmas Parade. Because I think people would be uh, more inclined to remember the tradition instead of Santa. Nothing against Santa, but you check that out for me, Mr. City Attorney. I'll, I'll get right on there, Mr. Labonte. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Labonte. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, please open the roll on this item. Close the roll. Tabulate the votes. Twelve ayes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, we're going to go to item number 31. Uh, we have one public comment card. We're going to go out to the San Fernando Valley to Ms. Pearman. Ms. Pearman? Ms. Pearman? Yeah, here I am. Okay, uh, this is about that telephone reduction. Uh, I believe it's a tax myself. I believe you're misleading the public of, of the, uh, changing the name of the excise tax and renaming it. People, don't blame anyone but yourself if you vote these people in and you vote for these taxes. Some of the... Um, is either the public or the politicians are not telling the complete truth. Public, the public has to tell the politicians that they're not telling the complete truth. That they're, uh, and the ethic committees are figureheads. They don't do any real work. People will have to uh, do the work and will have to po police the politicians. Number 31 is wrong, misleading, and deceptive. Afterwards, people will see what it is, but it's too late. People will have to decide if you want to tax, uh, uh, to tax themselves. If people want new taxes, you don't have the public, you don't have anyone to blame but yourself. And also, I think it's wrong to place it on the February 5th election ballot. That's the way to push that tax in because people will be so concerned about who they want as president that they won't even look at it and read the fine print um, because they'll be so busy trying to figure out who they want as president. So I believe this was done purposely on the way, and I don't believe this is any reduction because I don't believe you guys can uh, afford a reduction. So... This is wrong, and I don't think you should pass it. Really look at it. Please, all the politicians, especially Rosendahl, please look at this. I don't believe it's correct. Thank you, Ms. Perriman. Thank you. Uh, that closes our public comment for this item. Anybody wishing to be heard from council? Uh, seeing none, let's go ahead and open the roll, please. Uh, close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. That is approved. And if we can send that forthwith without objection and uh, 18 forthwith without objection as well. Uh, next item, please. Item 32, call special for cards from the public, and an amending motion has been circulated. Okay, we have uh, cards from the public here on item 32. I'd like to have uh, Richard Smith come forward first, and then we'll have Mike Alvidrez. And if I can ask folks just to keep their conversations down to a minimum, please. Good morning, Mr. President and members of the council. My name is Richard Smith. I'm with the United Coalition East Prevention Project. And on behalf of our membership, 
we urge your full support and swift passage of the renewal of this invaluable program. We only wish that it could be larger and more encompassing but because it helps so many people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael Vidres. Good morning, Mr. President, uh, members of the Council, Mike Alvidris, Skidrow Housing Trust. I want to echo the prior speaker uh, and urge passage of this important motion. We have a precious, a pre precious resource that we need to preserve uh, for the benefit of uh, low income, people on fixed income, and seniors. Uh, and this extension will allow city staff uh, in the planning and housing departments to complete uh, their much uh, needed work. Thank you. Thank you very much. That will close our general public comment. And uh, Ms. Perry is on the speaker queue. I'd like to recognize Ms. Perry at this time. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. I was, sorry, I was temporarily uh, dazzled by Mr. Labonge's comments. Uh, I just, <laughs> just like to. Uh, you, have we, we haven't had all the speakers yet, so I'm willing to. We, let we that did. Go. Yeah, let's just go, that, go through no, that and then I'll... No, we, we had both of them. All right, well, then I'll call the question. Just want to vote. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Ms. Perry. With that, let's go ahead and open the roll. And please close the roll to tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. That is approved. Thank you very much for public comment, and thank you for that, colleagues. Next item. Item 36, called special for cards from the public. Okay. Item 36, Ms. Hahn, did you want to speak before the cards? Okay, Ms. Hahn. Colleagues, I just want to uh, set the stage here a little bit for um, uh, the 245 that I am calling. Um, I'm recommending that uh, we assert jurisdiction over a recent action by the Cultural Heritage Commission. On October 18th, the Commission acted to recommend uh, state historic designation for Angels Gate Park through the California Office of Historic Preservation. This designation comes uh, from an application submitted by the Fort MacArthur Military Association. The merits of this application is just one of my concerns. Um, Angels Gate Park is a part of the cultural and history of the city, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're not sure that this is the route we want to go. And also what really troubles me is the process. Um, Angels Gate Cultural Center, in cooperation with various stakeholders, including my office, the Department of Recreation and Parks, has begun a master plan process for the entire park. And while the application by the Military Association was known to this group, the Commission agendized and acted on this matter without any real community involvement. Uh, their notice, even to my office, was weak at best. There was no uh, interaction of the Neighborhood Council or the working group preparing the master plan for this, uh, uh, this land use. Uh, even according to the Military Association, they're a little bit surprised uh, at the item being agendized so quickly. Um, in short, it's my opinion that the entire community was left out of this most important action by the Commission. And I think that itself merits um, reconsideration, as you know, since the inclusion of neighborhood councils in the charter of the city of Los Angeles. No council, board, commission uh, is supposed to take action without making sure that they have input from the local neighborhood uh, council. Um, additionally, since uh, preparing this 245 action, uh, it's come to my attention that perhaps the Cultural Heritage Commission does not even have the authority to make such a recommendation to the state. Um, that's an action maybe uh, reserved for the council. Uh, this commission falls under the newly created Office of Historic Preservation in the planning department. And uh, while we, I hope I will get support to assert our jurisdiction, I'd like to hear whether or not uh, this is really, uh, according to our administrative co code, uh, whether or not we in the city must speak with one voice when we make such a uh, recommendation to a state um, agency. So I know there's uh, some people, I think there's about five cards uh, of people that have come down to speak on this, so maybe we can hear from them. And then I hope I'll have your support, colleagues, to assert jurisdiction of this action. Thank you. And we just had a sixth added to that list. Um, so we'll begin with Nathan uh, Birnbaum and then uh, Douglas Epperhart. We are first two speakers. Good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, council uh, members. Thanks for the opportunity to address you. Uh, my name is Nathan Birnbaum. I'm here representing Angels Gate Cultural Center. 
uh, the board and the Angels Gate Master Planning Steering Committee. I'm pleased uh, to uh, be joined here by board members and members of the community. Uh, the Cultural Center has the privilege of helping to master plan Angels Gate Park uh, as a cultural destination for the people of Los Angeles. Um, we're able to do this thanks to the generous support of the Department of Recreation and Parks uh, that has granted us a 30-year lease and funding supporters around the state. The center created a, a steering committee with broad representation from the community in conjunction with District 15 and the Department of Recreation and Parks. Um, the importance of this property to the people of the Harbor area and um, the entire LA region uh, is becoming very well known. If a single group um, can have a substantial impact on the future of this site without recourse to the steering committee or the consensus process, uh, then the whole process uh, that Angels Gate Cultural Center is sponsoring of partnership with the community is in question. Um, I'd like to thank the, uh, the councilwoman for, uh, for this motion and uh, thank the council for considering this serious matter of process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Birnbaum. Uh, Douglas Epperhart is next. He'll be followed by Scott Donnelly. Doug Epperhart, President, Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Council. This is very important to our neighborhood, so much so that the Neighborhood Council had allocated $10,000 to contribute to this master plan process. We have had public meetings. We have had much participation by the community. And we found out about this action by the Cultural Heritage Commission after the fact. This not only does not constitute early notice, as envisioned by the Charter, it constitutes no notice and is a problem, one of a few out there within city departments that definitely needs to be addressed. Uh, I urge you to support this motion. I thank the Councilwoman for acting so quickly on it and giving us notice of it. And. Uh, I look forward to a positive result. Thank you all very much. Well, Scott Donnelly is our next speaker. And after that, uh, we'll have uh, Ray Wyman. Good morning, council members. I'm Scott Donnelly. I'm the president of Angels Gate Cultural Center, a nonprofit organization. I just wanted to let you know exactly who we are. We're one of the largest tenants on the property. Uh, our buildings uh, have galleries, artist studios. We have children's education programs. We have adult education programs. We have dance classes. We have neighborhood council meetings. A lot of organizations use that property, and we have a, quite a few buildings that we share with the community. Uh, we would like to have more time to address the issue of what's being presented with respect to the preservation since we have such a large amount of, of the buildings on the property. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ray Wyman is next. After that will be Laura Loring. Good morning. My name is Ray Wyman. I'm a former uh, <clears throat> president of the board of Angels Gate Cultural Center. I've been on that board approximately eight and a half years over two different periods of time. This is the first time ever that we have been able to gather all of the tenants of this park together to reach consensus on a master plan. You've already heard of all the help we've had from the council office. Uh, we have, for the very first time, spoken together as a community and therefore request your um, approval of the three requests of the councilwoman today in order to secure process, which as an attorney and many of you are also know is just as important as the substance of the law. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Loring? After that will be Sherry Franklin. Hello. Uh, thank you for letting us come today. Thank you, Janice Hahn, for giving us this opportunity to speak. I am Laura Loring. I am the project manager for Angels Gate um, Park Master Plan. And we are coming so close to having a public consensus on this park and what it needs to be for the public, for LA in general. And we are so glad to have the chance today to be able to tell everyone that we really would like to have a due process to make considerations for the park all these different things, a historic nomination, all would affect our master planning process uh, drastically and the time delays and everything that it would cost could potentially hurt this park in an extreme way. So we're very grateful to be here. Thank you very much. 
We hope we have your consideration. Thank you very much. And our final speaker is Sherry Franklin. Yes. Good morning. Uh, good morning, City Council, and thank you, Councilwoman Hahn. I just wanted to let you know that the planning process for the master planning is funded by this uh, very first grant that the city uh, project has received for from the California uh, Cultural Historical Endowment. So we do have requirements that we have to abide by for that process and also the Angels Gate Park is one of your specified projects for Proposition K, which also requires that the site is master planned with all of the uses and uh, development needs of the park taken into consideration. So through this process, not only do we have to consider historical requirements, but the requirements of the different uh, funders as well, and we need the support of a broad range of city departments in order to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's our final speaker, uh, Ms. Hahn. Thank you, and I appreciate all of you taking the opportunity to come down here. And any, any of you colleagues that have uh, a land use issue like this where we are, are master planning, whether it be Griffith Park or anything else, uh, the fact that we do have stakeholders uh, from, from everywhere um, really coming to a consensus, speaking with one voice uh, to plan Angels Gate Park, uh, and then to have uh, the Cultural Heritage Commission kind of act uh, separately uh, from the one voice that has been uh, speaking uh, is problematic. Uh, what I'd like to do, there, there's two issues, Mr. President, uh, I think. One is I would like us to assert jurisdiction. Uh, I would actually like us to veto the action of the Commission. Uh, but I also think um, in the, there's a the larger issue of how, how do we put a process in place with Cultural Heritage Commission of notification, uh, but also there's the issue that uh, I'm sorry, CLA Ms. Hahn. brought we, me. We have about 15 conversations happening over on this know, side, really. and I'd like to be respectful, Thank Ms. Hahn. You. If we could move the conversations either out, all behind me. out of the chambers or if so, we could But I also Thank have you. the CLA telling me that under our administrative code, no person or department affiliated with the City of Los Angeles may represent that the City of Los Angeles supports, opposes, seeks, wishes to amend, or has any position um, on policy unless such position has been adopted as a, an official position of the City of Los Angeles. So there might even be an issue that they don't even have the authority uh, to make this kind of recommendation on their own. So how, how should we handle this, Mr. President? Should we uh, take up the, should we assert jurisdiction? And then again, I would like us to veto the Cultural Heritage Commission, but then I think there's these bigger issues. Okay, Mr. Mr. City Attorney, would that be the proper way to proceed? I'll, I'll defer to Pete. Uh, uh, Pete. One city attorney or another. Hold on one second. We can't hear you. Can we have that microphone up? Okay, go ahead. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's nope. We still don't have volume. He's uh, at the table right there. Change the microphone. Hold on. Let's keep the microphone. Pete Echeverria okay. from the city okay. attorney's office. Um, this type of action is the type of action that's covered by 2.19 of the administrative code. That is to say that an action by the committee urging a another government entity from taking a position or a right. particular action right. is, is supposed to be referred to the council for your approval before it goes on. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that, that that has not been the practice of the Commission. I would urge them to change that for the future. However, since that has not been the practice, I think in this one instance it's appropriate for you to, to rely on 245 uh, if that's the wish of the Council and to take the matter up and then take whatever appropriate action you deem Thank you, Mr. Necessary. City Attorney. I completely concur with your advice on this issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what's the date today? Yeah. <laughs> Please let the record record reflect. Uh, what I also thought, let's have, I, I wouldn't mind having Ken Bernstein come up um, uh, and maybe address our concerns about notification and certainly about this, this administrative code and how we might work together better. Ken Bernstein with the Office of Historic Resources in the Planning Department. Um, our office is supportive of the motion. Um, the reason uh, this came to the commission in a, in a somewhat strange way, we, we are newly, the city of Los Angeles was just approved as a certified local government for historic preservation earlier this year, which is a major step for our historic preservation program, which gives us for the first time the ability to review National Register and California Register uh, applications before they go on to the, the federal and, uh, and state governments. Uh, so this is a 
very new process, and obviously we have some kinks to work out in that process. Um, but um, the commission, uh, as a certified local government, it's important that the local historic preservation commission continue to have a role and make a recommendation to the full council, right. as we do for our city historic cultural monuments. So we're supportive of the the goals of the motion and. Uh, uh, in the, Why don't you this, speak to the notification? The notification issue, what, uh, what happened there, we had been in touch, uh, understandably, as, as you indicated, uh, probably not as vigorously as we should have, and we take responsibility for that. Um, the reason that neighborhood councils were not notified in this instance is, again, this was a little bit different creature. Typically, we create a case in our case tracking system that goes out to the early notification uh, system, and all neighborhood councils and community groups are notified uh, in that way. Because this was a review and comment item on a, another level of government's action, there was not a case created, and therefore there was no notification. We will rectify that uh, in the future as well to make certain that whenever we are commenting on federal and state actions, there will be a case created and there will be early notification of neighborhood And you councils. will make the recommendation then to the full city council. Before. Exactly. Good. Well, I think we've, uh, uh, I appreciate you doing that because we really do want to work together. So uh, based on that, everyone's supportive of this. Uh, let's assert jurisdiction and veto the commission's action. Thank you. Mr. Cardenas is our next speaker and then Mr. Labanche. Thank you. Um, now, what was that designation that we have to get used to now? What's called a certified local government for historic preservation, which uh, is a good thing. That makes us eligible for grants uh, for historic preservation, survey work, and planning. We want to maintain our certified local government status. Now, who, who, who gave us that designation? The uh, state of California and the National Park Service. Okay, so on two levels of higher government, the state and the federal, Correct. gave us that designation. Correct. But did either one of them dictate to us how we internally utilize that as far as our internal mechanisms? No. Um, most certified local governments, the reason we've been employing the practice that we have with the Cultural Heritage Commission playing that role is most certified local governments do just that, that the local Historic Preservation Commission conducts that review on behalf of the local government. In this case, given this administrative code section dealing with intergovernmental relations, we certainly do feel it's appropriate to uh, begin the practice that we've discussed this morning. Thank you for that clarification. And the next question goes to our city attorney. Um, although I do agree with you quite often, uh, I do agree with you today as well. The, so can you clarify for us when you spoke of earlier about the official position of the city, who is designated as the body or individual within the city of Los Angeles to determine that? The, uh, the various departments and commissions are, are allowed, obviously, to make recommendations to the council, and it is the council that takes the position with respect to other governmental entities. The mayor then is charged with implementing those decisions, either directly or through the departments. Okay, so a little bit more in layperson's terms. So basically, it's the city council, the elected council members, the 15 members here, Correct. that it is our body that is the one that is, is charged with setting policy slash and or right. taking the official position in this case. Yes. And n most of the time, this is the body, unless the charter says otherwise on a specific matter or a specific jurisdiction, it is the, the council, the, the legislative body of the city that makes that decision. Yes. And takes that position officially. In the intergovernmental relations field, absolutely. So, so the bottom line is whether this body takes staff recommendations or commission recommendations, et cetera, the non-elected rec people who make recommendations to, on behalf of the city to this body, whether we agree with it nine times out of ten or 99 percent of the time, it should never be assumed that without the vote of this body or the acknowledgement of this body that that is not the official, that until then it is the official position of the Correct. city. Correct. Okay, so even by custom and practice, we, we do not take positions by the city of Los Angeles. It has to come to the council, or if the council chooses not to take jurisdiction or what have you of a particular matter, then it becomes the position of the city. There are, there are a list of actions that are maintained by the CLA so that if, for example, legislation is proposed in Sacramento that is consistent with a prior position taken by the city council, then that 
legislation can be supported so long as it's clearly consistent with that prior action, can be supported without having to come back to council. But even in that, can you get a little closer to the mic? Even yes, of in course. that, that's an interpretive position that the city has taken. But again, the backdrop of that is consistent with the position of the Correct. city, which means the city council already covered that in a previous matter. Correct. Okay. So the bottom line is it's the city council of Los Angeles that sets the policy for the city of yes. Los Angeles. Yes. And sets whether or not we are in fact taking an official position. It's the city council of Los Angeles. Correct. Thank you. Mr. LaMange. Thank you very much. Uh, Hahn, thank you. And thank the people of San Pedro for coming all the way up here. And Ms. Hahn, I just think it's real important as this new process and Ken, your work Mr. Echeverria's work, but Ms. Han, you always have the people come from one of the most historic, my second favorite, my own neighborhood and my own district, but San Pedro is one of the greatest historic spots, and you must do this right, whatever you do, because it has a lifelong effect. I know, I think it's historical monument number 163, is that uh, Walt Disney's first studio? It's a parking lot, and I know I got criticized for making it, but that's his first studio at Hyperion. You got to do it right or it doesn't stand the test of time. Anyway, I do uh, want to thank you, Mr. Bernstein, Mr. Echeverria, and Ms. Hahn, as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Hahn. So I believe uh, the city attorney has recommended that we take two votes, one to assert jurisdiction, uh, and then we'll take another vote to veto the actions. And vetoing the actions will result in the state taking this up with no recommendation from the city of Los Angeles. Is that correct? I, I, I believe that's the case unless there's a desire to reconsider it by the Commission and right. Council. Right. I think so. that's what we want to have happen. And okay. Ms. Thank Ms. Hahn, for clarification on the remaining motion on items three and four, do you still want those instructions to planning? What? Two instructions uh, on the original 245 motion instructing planning department to report back. On the, yeah, I would, I would like to sort of, uh, I do. I, I think what Ken said is absolutely right, but I, let's, let's have a formal uh, uh, presentation on how we're going to change uh, both of these policies. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Okay, we will take May I inquire, uh, is there a yes. need for this matter to be referred to Plum? That's item number four, I believe. Where would we like for this policy to be ironed out? Rule? I think Rules? Rules. 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 Let's iron this out in rules. It's rules and government. Okay. All right. Happily accepted. All right. With that, let's go ahead and... What about the notification? That's in rules, too? Okay. Okay. Open the roll on the asserting jurisdiction. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. We have now asserted jurisdiction. We have motion from Ms. Hahn to veto the action. Please open the roll. A yes vote is to veto. No vote is the opposite. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, that is vetoed. Thank you very much. Um, next order of business. Council has motions for posting and referral. Those are posted and referred. There's an excuse on the desk. Councilmember Gruel requests to be excused to leave at 11.45 on Tuesday, December 4th for city business. That meets council policy. She is excused. Desk is clear. Uh, any business announcements, colleagues? Any business announcements? If not, do we have any adjourning motions today? If I can please ask everybody in council chambers to please rise for our adjourning motions. Ms. Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to adjourn in memory of the mother of a good friend of mine, and her mother's name was Oralia West. She passed away on October 27th. She was the beloved mother of Cecilia Nunez, who is a very active member of the 9th Council District. In her spare time, Mrs. West enjoyed listening to music, watching movies, and crocheting. This remarkable woman, who was the mother of a, another remarkable woman, will be missed but never forgotten. I would also like to adjourn in memory of Clotilde C. Odegaard, who passed away at her home on October the 14th. She was born in the 9th Council District to Constantine and Mary 
Castruccio on June 4th of 1922. She attended Ramona Convent Secondary School and later went on to study chemistry at the University of Southern California. She was preceded in death by her husband of 44 years, Oscar T. Odegaard, who was a finance specialist for the city's administrative office. She is survived by her eight children and 17 grandchildren, and she will be greatly missed. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Um, uh, a, a sad development in San Pedro over the, week, uh, over the weekend. Um, Latarian Tasby, who was a San Pedro High School uh, football player and student known as LT, was shot and killed Saturday night at a Halloween party. He was only 17 years old. Um, LT arrived at San Pedro High School in the spring of his 10th grade year with a low GPA because of an unsettled home life. However, he worked hard, he raised his grades, he became a star athlete on both the basketball and football teams. Um, and at the party, he was just planning to stop by to wish a friend a happy birthday. Uh, apparently, according to police, uninvited guests crashed the party, a fight broke out, he was shot and killed, and four other students were injured. Um, Ironically, LT, as he was known, was called a peacemaker since joining um, a campus leadership group earlier this year. Teammates and coaches said he was fun-loving, joke-teller with a warm personality. He was a mediator, said John Bobich, the varsity basketball coach. If there were people arguing about something, he was the guy saying, just let it be. And the football coach, Mike Walsh, called him one of the hardest-working members of the team. LT is survived by his aunt and uncle, who he lived with, Virginia and Armando uh, via senior, his mother, Rosemary Sneed, a sister, four brothers, including um, his twin, Darian. Very, very sad tragedy in San Pedro. Thank you. Mr. Rosendahl. Mr. President, Gloria Tate. Gloria passed away on Tuesday, October 16th, as a result of a burst blood vessel in her brain. Gloria was a longtime Venice resident. She was extremely well known and well loved throughout the community. She always had a big smile, a hug, a laugh, or an encouragement for everyone she met. She was active in her home church, the Venice Beach Fellowship, as well as the First Baptist Church in Venice. Whenever there was a community event, where she could help, feeding the homeless, helping with the Vera Davis Festival, coming to Oakwood Recreation Center for meetings. Gloria was the first to arrive on the scene and the last to leave. Gloria will be dearly missed by her family, her church, and the whole community of Venice. May she rest in peace. Thank you very much. And last night we had a, a vigil for Jonathan Morales Gonzalez, 17-year-old boy, a student at Hollywood High School who was stabbed to death last week. Um, in gang-related violence. Um, he is the fourth uh, person we've had to bury in the last two months. Um, and in Hollywood, we certainly are all united to ensure that that is the last. And uh, I want to thank the community. I want to thank also uh, another mother that was there who lost her son two weeks ago, Fairfax High School student um, as well. May Jonathan Morales Gonzalez rest in peace. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. This meeting of the Los Angeles City Council is adjourned. We will next be in session tomorrow, Wednesday, October 31st, 2007, at 10 a.m. here in John Farrow Council Chambers. We'll see you then.